Good evening. Those who attended yesterday's rally did so to demand an end to the violence between Kurdish separatists and the Turkish government. It was a message which fell on deaf ears. And as the violence flares, recriminations have also shattered the peace of three days of mourning, with distraught relatives calling the president himself a killer. Also tonight, thousands of people have gathered in the centre of Turkey's capital, Ankara, to lay flowers and pay tribute to the victims of bomb blasts, which Kurdish groups say killed 128 people at yesterday's peace rally. But in the mainly Kurdish city of Diyarbakir, police have used force against protesters, firing rubber bullets and water cannon. No group has yet claimed responsibility for yesterday's attack, but the government insists Islamic State extremists are the main suspects. Jane Deeth reports. Vladimir Putin's sentiments about the Ankara attack may be unequivocal, but his country's relationship with Turkey is far from clear-cut. Russian fighter jets have repeatedly been found in Turkish airspace, and there's widespread suspicion that Moscow's military goal in Syria is to keep President Assad in power. And that puts President Putin at odds with many Western governments. So just what is his game plan? Krishnan has been speaking to the former Secretary General of NATO, Yarp Dehoop Skefa. The former Secretary General of NATO speaking to Krishnan earlier. Palestinian officials say that a pregnant woman and her young daughter were killed in an Israeli airstrike aimed at Hamas weapon-making facilities in the Gaza Strip. Now, 20 years ago in America, hundreds of thousands of African Americans marched on their country's capital to demand an end to discrimination. This weekend, with continuing tensions between the black community and the police, African Americans say they risk being criminalized for trivialities like jaywalking, failing to keep their homes presentable, and wearing their jeans too low. Our Washington correspondent Kylie Morris reports from the St. Louis suburb of Pagedale. The sister of the Ebola nurse, Pauline Kafaki, says doctors missed a big opportunity to spot the return of the infection before she fell seriously ill this week. Britain's three living former Prime Ministers, Sir John Major, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, are all backing the campaign to keep the country in the European Union. And when they were built in the 1960s, they were the tallest housing blocks in Europe. But today, Glasgow's Red Road flats were demolished. Well, almost. Let's take a look at the sport now. And Ireland met France in the Rugby World Cup this afternoon, needing to win to avoid confronting champions New Zealand in the quarterfinals. An Irish victory would set up a match against the slightly less fearsome Argentinians in the last eight. Here's our sports reporter, Jordan jarrett Bryan. We're back tomorrow at 7. Until then, that's Channel 4 News. Have a very good evening.